Last um, Saturday, I was in Knock and I just saw this headline, Pope to Irish Catholics don't get stuck in the past. So that was the, that was the headline, which I thought was very interesting. I went on to the, the Vatican News website, couldn't find these exact remarks that are being reported in the Irish Catholic. So I just thought I'll read through these remarks first, because uh, I just want to talk about something. Pope to Irish Catholics don't get stuck in the past. Eamon Kelly, April 28th, 2022, Synod. Michael Kelly in Rome. As the Church in Ireland continues the process of bishops, priests and laypeople working together to chart the future, Pope Francis has pleaded for Irish Catholics not to cling to past ways of doing things. He was speaking in unscripted remarks after receiving a group of Irish people involved in Catholic education and being presented with a copy of a new Irish book on the synodal process. The pontiff insisted that returning to the roots of the faith is where the Church in Ireland will find life on the synodal pathway, but that Catholics cannot be imprisoned by the past. Dialogue in the church, the Pope said, is very important. He said par parishioners involved in the synodal process must discern the roots of the faith because the tree, in order to grow, needs close relationships with the roots. However, he warned, don't get stuck at the roots, no, but be in relationship with the with the roots only with the roots do we become real people not statues in museums like some cold starched regional rigid traditionalists who think that life means living attached only to the roots there is a need for this relationship with the roots but but also to move forward he said church teaching the pope said should grow instead of just hiding in the past and this is the true tradition, taking from the past to move forward. Tradition is not static, it is dynamic, moving forward, he said. Referring to the new book, The Synodal Pathway, When Rhetoric Meets Reality, Pope Francis said that the idea in the subtitle is a very beautiful thing. To educate is not to say merely rhetorical things. Education is bringing together what is said with reality. People, he said, have a right to make mistakes, but the educator accompanies them on the path to guide them. The true educator is never afraid of mistakes. No, he or she accompanies, takes people by the hand, listens and talks. The Pope was speaking during a private audience with a delegation led by Professor Eamon Conway of Mary Macklin College in Limerick from Global Researchers Advancing Catholic Education, Grace, an international research-based partnership on Catholic education. Salus animarum lex suprema, the salvation of souls is the supreme law. That's what canon law is all designed towards. But as members of the church, we are called to give glory to God. We are called to accomplish the, what Christ has asked us to do to go and preach the good news to all the world, to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to bring as many souls as we can to his light. And I'm no great theologian to be able to explain this as well as some priests can do, but I kind of understand where we're going in the church when we, we're, if we're going towards Christ or going away from Christ. If we're walking towards Christ, if we hold Christ close to ourselves, if we're walking away from him. And the purpose of this channel is to have a dialogue, is to have a conversation and is to understand, OK, well, what is going on in the church? Um, I mean, I don't know why the Pope made these r remarks specifically to a group of Catholics coming from Limerick. Who knows what what was the reason behind saying those remarks because i mean it's pretty damning like saying cold start rigid traditionalists um has the pope ever sat down with in in um saint paul the sixth auditorium with pilgrims traditional groups in the church with groups from the fraternity of saint peter or the institute of christ the king bon pastor or god forbid the society of um, St. Pius X, has the Pope actually met faithful that go to Mass, that go to these places? Because at the end of the day, <laughs> it, was, it was the present two Popes in the Vatican 
that has driven so many people to encounter these cold start rigid traditionalists according to what they label them. It was Pope Benedict that opened the door to a wider appreciation of the traditions of the church with some more pontificum. It was Pope Francis that opened the door for faithful to go to the SSPX for sacraments. Pope Francis, during the year of mercy, said it was valid and licit to go to confession with any priest from the Society of St. Pius X. That permission hasn't been changed or rescinded. He then published a further permission that laity could have uh, a matrimony, marriage, with a priest from the Society of St. Pius X, which includes Mass. Okay, so the Pope, both Popes have been uh, opening the door for for people to appreciate what these traditional groups have to offer. And at the same time, we seem to have a Pope that kind of doesn't like that that door was opened. He said, oh God, this is too much. Not what I, I just wanted a little bit. I did. I suppose a lot of confusion there trying to understand exactly what the Pope is trying to say to us. What, what exactly do you want us to do? Because if you, if you don't want Catholics going to traditional groups, why don't you come out and say it? Why don't you just say, look, uh, Here's a new uh, motor proprio, please. Uh, no Catholic group can go traditional Latin Mass anymore. And they've been abrogated. The, the right has been abrogated. And they are outside the church, blah, blah, blah. It'd be very clear, you know. I suppose he can't do that. Um, and we know why. I love the Eucharist. I'm, I love the Eucharist. And if people have been watching my videos, they'll remember that I did defend the Novus Ordo said in latin which i've experienced for many years if priests said the black and did the red and followed the right uh, over the last 50 years we wouldn't be in the situation we are in if priests did what the Vas second vatican council said instead of inventing their own things we wouldn't be in the mess we're in today the Va second vatican council never said to destroy altars never said to destroy altar rails it never said to destroy respect for the eucharist it never said to get rid of cassocks and all of these elements which show our identity as christians so the amount of things that we do and say in the church today were never even discussed in second vatican council and i'm not going to go into that discussion because it's it's so broad and uh, and, and so on and so forth but we are in today in, in a world in a catholic world where most people do not believe in the eucharist and this channel was set up to challenge people to think what is the eucharist what is the eucharist what is the holy sacrifice of the mass the mass is to give praise and worship to god the mass Everything in the Mass has to be directed towards God. The Mass is not for the people. And many people don't understand that. But sure, it's all about us. It's, it's like a, it's a rock concert type of thing, but kind of religiously thing, like that the priest, you know, has to make us all feel warm and comfortable and if we bother going to Mass. Like, isn't that what the Mass is? Like, or like what you telling me that the Mass is to give praise and worship to God? But sure, you know, sure... More, more. yeah yeah that's what the mass is that's what the holy sacrifice of the mass is to give praise and worship to god and when we are doing that we are, are we are drawing ourselves near to god uh this is uh, the whole theology of the mass has been completely lost in the church in my opinion among the laity today because that it, because people no under no longer understand that they are experiencing the real presence of our lord in 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 the, in the eucharist anymore and that's that's what happened over the last few, few years like where are we going with this where are we going in ireland and there's five thousand catholics who would consider them traditional in ireland if you survey the whole island of ireland those who would go in a heartbeat to traditional latin mass on a sunday you have over five thousand catholics what is our place in the church if tomorrow there was a novus ordo mass in latin said reverently ad orientem as uh, as stipulated in vatican ii i would be there no i would be there if, with the church at a novus ordo mass said reverently in latin as the council fathers envisaged during second vatican ii 
I'm nothing, I'm no problem against that as long as that Mass is for the praise and worship of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Eucharist is reverenced. Today in Ireland, at most Masses, for the, those who bother even going to Mass, the Eucharist is no longer reverenced as it was done for 1800 years. And the Pope doesn't really want us, he said, look at the roots, but don't be stuck to the roots and don't be stuck in the past. What? Well, like it or not, for the last you know, 2,000 years, the Holy Spirit has been inspiring the church all during this time, growing the church. You know, ring after ring of growth in the church, inspired and carried by the Holy Spirit. You cannot just take all of that uh, growth and say, look, this, this doesn't mean anything to us. And I go back to the point, if somebody loves their faith, loves traditional Latin Mass, is nourished by traditional Latin Mass, is nourished by these groups, why isn't the Pope promoting that growth in the faith? What's wrong? Where's the diversity in the church? If we can have LGBTQ Masses in Germany where we can bless them, why would you not allow the growth in the church? Because we all know why. Because it shines a mirror to the past that the church is very uncomfortable looking at. <laughs> Many priests and bishops that go to a traditional Latin Mass where they will see very young uh, congregation, they are uncomfortable by it because it's shining a light on what has happened to the church in the last 50 years. It's shining a light in reality that you have a completely different form of worship today in many places that was never envisaged in Vatican II, but is the result of systematic changes over 50 years. It's completely different faith, if people even bother going to it. And, and because it does capture people, so, you know, we are, we are left, um, you know, with, with a church that is in decline. And the apostolic nuncio for Ireland is leaving and he's going from Ireland to the Czech Republic. Czech Republic in 1991 had 4 million Catholics that identified as Catholics. Today it has 700,000 Catholics that identify as Catholics in their latest survey. That's what happened in Czech Republic. Ireland is not far off. Uh, many people might put Catholic down as kind of a nationalist sl uh, slash, na uh, but are they really Catholics? If you're not even bothered to go get up on a Sunday to go to Mass, if you're not even bothered to do, you know, Sinn Féin style Catholic, Catholicism and that. We, yeah, that's really what we have left is in Ireland is Sinn Féin Catholicism. If people identify as Catholics and don't go to Mass, it, they're Sinn Féin style Catholic, Catholics that, you know, will, will say I'm Catholic, but I'll vote for abortion, I'll vote for, uh, um, you know, every single woke policy that comes out of the radical left that's what we have left in Ireland anyway those are my thoughts I'm not against any group in the church or I'm not I'm not advocating that the only way that the church can move forward is moving back to only having traditional Latin mass I'm advocating for diversity of what the church should have as far as the the, the these treasured rites of the church. We saw in Sligo that the Bishop of Elphin would promote the Greek Catholic Mass of a priest giving, celebrating the divine worship ad orientum to God. This happened last week. So if, we, if Greek Catholics can have their sacred traditions worshipping God ad orientum, why can't Roman Catholics have the sacrifice of the Mass that was celebrated for what, 1800 years? What is so wrong with that? If that's what we find beautiful, sacred, if what previous generations held sacred, why can't we hold that sacred today? Instead of labeling us cold, starched, rigid traditionalists. Cold, starched, rigid, rigid traditionalists. Like, it seems like every time Pope Francis seems to be taking pot shots at a group of Catholics in the church. You know, it's I, I find it very strange, very bizarre where we are in the church today for this Pope that wants to go to the peripheries, that wants to 
you know, that you he won't even talk to them. But sure, that's sure. What can we expect from the current pope? He won't talk to Cardinal Zen of Hong Kong. He won't talk to many people. If that's what dictators usually do. They only stick to their points of view and don't allow dialogue. You know, it's it's a lot of talk about dialogue, but when it actually comes to okay, let's sit down and have a conversation. Oh no, no, no! You have that point of view. Oh no, no, we're not, we're not interested in that point of view. Unless you change your point of view, please, you just go away and keep out of here. That is that where we're going in the church? Is that dialogue? Is dialogue calling a group of people like, you know, if 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 we, if, if Cardinal if if Cardinal Burke or anyone he came out and, and used those words about, you know, some other group, you could imagine what 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 would be said in the church. But it's fine. The Pope can say these things. And so forth and so forth. But look, let's see where we go. At the end of the day, it was the two popes sitting in the Vatican who pushed forward traditional Latin mass and who pushed forward traditional movements. The two popes. Because Pope Francis could have just said, look, this society is in pious attempts completely outside the church. A Catholic should not be associating with them. And they're excommunicated, all the priests. They have nobody has faculties to do anything and don't go near them. That's what Pope Francis could have done. You know, he could have, but he didn't. So what are you doing? You're saying at one hand, cold start, rigid traditionalists. And then at the other, you're just saying, okay, well, you know, what? Where are we going? Where is this confusion going to end? I, I'm, I'm, I suspect this confusion will only end with the with when some group has is brave enough to stand up against the Pope, and who knows who will that be? Anyway, my thoughts, not against the Novus Ordo. I never said that. I was I've experienced what I you know I experienced Christ in the Novus Ordo said reverently at Orientum in Latin. You can experience the sacred there. Is it the? But I understand once you educate yourself and you, you see what the traditional Latin Mass is, and you see the treasures of the Church, you educate yourself. Okay, well look, the, the Mass is serious. The Mass is extremely serious. Um, and it was you know when you read people like Roger Book or Valentin Tomberg, and they show you that the sacred is very very serious. This is not something that you just play around with. Ah, let's. Let's let's get a let's get a, a marker out here. I'll get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. You know, on one hand, the church is saying, you know, the roots. You know, the whole the whole purpose of 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 the new rite was to go back to the early church. This is what the early church used to do. The early church used to give communion in the hand. So we're going to do communion in the hand. Oh, and so the Holy Spirit had no wasn't working in the early church or in in the following se- centuries growing and growing the increased appreciation for our Lord and Eucharist was the Holy Spirit not working there do you know the, you see the, what we're hearing from Rome is confusion that's all we're getting from Rome is confusion and what we're getting from the Pope is just more confusion on top of confusion and what we're going to end up as a church that is what a pale image of the Anglican Church of what we've seen in, in the UK. Um, I don't think it'll come to that, but it's very sad, the current situation. And uh, I, I certainly don't consider myself some cold, stark, rigid traditionalists. I go to any mass. People know me. What I'm saying is we need to re- renew the Eucharist. That is the purpose of this channel. And if you're if that was done in the novice order we wouldn't have the crisis we are having the church but it is simply defective it is simply not the novice order is simply not capable in many ways of doing that in too many places because it can be used for any purpose and that's the sad reality we're faced into uh, in the church and when you destroy the eucharist you know, you just you, you when you're not giving praise and worship to our Lord in the Eucharist in the holy sacrifice of the Mass, the faith doesn't hold together. It doesn't have a heart. It doesn't. It becomes a social justice club or an NGO or you know light entertainment. I'll go to Mass down there. They have a nice choir down. So I might go to that for an hour on a Sunday. So I have nothing else to do now that I'm retired. 
is that where we're heading? Really? Where nobody will kneel to the Eucharist anymore? Because that seems to be the result of these last 50 years of reform. But we haven't reformed our worship. We have deformed our worship. Everybody knows this. This isn't how the Eucharist was treated in the early centuries. I was just watching somebody at Mass and they went up and they, they got you and they brought it, put it in their pocket and they came down to the seat. It's just in front of me. And then he took it out and then he consumed it down when he was at the pew. Where did that pop out? You know. Um, but look, we just have to pray and hope. Um, and I say this humbly, like, <laughs> we are called to give praise and worship to our Lord in the Eucharist. And this can only be done by turning ourselves to our Lord. And... Uh, and I think that is what is missing in all of these questionnaires that we see in the church. You know, what do you want from the church? What do you, what, like, when you don't teach the faith, what can you expect? That's sadly what has happened. Nobody, when I was growing up, nobody ever said that the purpose of the Mass was to, pray, was to praise and worship our Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. Do you know, the most essential parts of our faith seem to be missing uh, you know the mass is not about people it's not about us it's not about us making us feel warm and fuzzy and so forth the mass is about the praise and worship of our lord jesus christ encountering him in the eucharist things like sanctifying grace have to be talked about in the church they don't seem to be you know, confession sanctifying grace these these things were, were, where is that discussion being said anyway god bless take care Bye-bye. If then when the doors are shut, thou drawest near, only reveal those hands, that side of thine. We know today what wounds are. Have no fear. Show us thy scars. We know the countersign the other gods were strong. But thou wast weak, they rode. But thou didst stumble to a throne. But to our wounds, only God's wounds can speak. Then what's your question? My question is, what went so awry after uh, Vatican II? People often refer to Vatican II as the council. Well, this is very strange because there have been other councils. But why is that the council? Here we have to distinguish between what Vatican II really taught versus what happened. Very few Catholics know what happened immediately after the council. Archbishop Bugnini was the principal architect of the new mass. And this was Bugnini's great moment of opportunity. They just got out of control. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain!